Hello everyone, welcome to Bees Battlegrounds. I'm Bobby B, and today we're looking at the G.I. Joe Classified series number 104, Agent Helix. Now, for those of you unfamiliar, Agent Helix showed up around 2009, 2010 as part of like the Rise of Cobra um, Operation His comics and the Rise of Cobra video game for sure. Um, she got her name from Double Helix Studios, who were part of the pr production company that created the uh, Rise of Cobra game. They created a character, obviously, her name is Agent Helix. And she's, uh, she's quite an interesting character, so let's dive in here. So we get our plastic free packaging. Got a nice shot of Agent Helix on the front of the box here in front of a SWAT truck. Um, I'd say that it's a, it could have been swapped out with a um, shock blast. Kind of like their packaging art got mixed up because he's like in the middle of like a riverbed with a train behind him. But um, there actually is a stint in the comics where Helix, Bomb Strike, and Don Moreno go back to Helix's childhood home, fight off a bunch of red ninjas, and kill some tra child traffickers and stuff. And then they hide in a panic room while the SWAT team clears the rest of the house. Um, so maybe that's what they're referencing here. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Again, shout out to JLS Comics. Um, if you guys haven't followed him on YouTube, watch him. He does some great background videos on different characters from all, all kinds of different genres and brands and stuff. We get a nice shot of the some artwork right there. We get our whole loadout. That same artwork on the side there. On the back, we get all her gear, showing off a little data pad on her shoulder, band-aid on her forearm. Now, I could not figure it out. I was looking it up, and I couldn't figure out what the band-aids mean. I know that she uses band-aids in some of the uh, comics as, like herself when they do like sand table and like pre-mission planning and stuff. Um, I know the, the Rise of Cobra figure had one, but I'm not exactly sure what, what, it, what it all is there for. Here are her attributes, and that's the box. We get our gray weapons locker, 104, Agent Helix. She's good to go. Secretly raised by uh, General Hawk after Snake Eyes rescued her from child traffickers. And then she's got like a uh, kind of like a premonition ability where she can keep track of, you know, how many rounds the bad guys fire and how many rounds they got left. And she can kind of like uh, anticipate um, the best probable outcome for different attacks and stuff. So she is like kind of like a... Uh, Almost like she's our first like mutant or superpowered human in the uh, G.I. Joe world. Well, uh, besides like the Cobra Law and Nemesis from Forces and stuff. But let's dive into the accessories. We got the double short sword sheath we've seen before with like Kamakura and a few others. Movie Storm Shadow. You got your two uh, two katanas. They're black blades with yellow handles, and the paint is kind of goofy on these yellow handles. It looks like it's, like, thrown on there really quick. But otherwise, pretty solid. Not too much going on in the, uh, the handles. Oh, they're actually two different ones. At least the handles are. One's got, like, a, a wrap in the center. A little bit of detail on the blade there. Gotta see when the light hits it. You get this, uh... Big knife. Let's launch my light across the map, uh, across the screen. Kind of like a flat silver, and then you got a uh, dark gray handle. Very similar to what we saw with like Shadow Tracker. We get her signature 10 millimeter auto pistols. They look pretty good, pretty solid. Um, they are in this that weird gray color that we keep seeing over and over and over and over and over again. And it, they just come off as kind of like cheap looking. Um, they do have the porthole for blast effects. They got the little extended magazine looking. They got the uh, laser flashlight, whatever you want to call it on the front of it, but no other, no other colors, just this flat, ugly gray. I do appreciate it being darker compared to some of the other ones we got like shooters, but And then we get two of these, I want to say, what was his name, Razor Claw from Valor vs. Venom kind of thing, like the Sand Scorpions, that uh, it's got two points of articulation, and then it's got a uh, open C-clamp to get over her arm, but pretty solid compared to some of the other stuff we've gotten. Let me check these swords out and check this out. Yeah, yeah, not, not that goofy rubber, rubber, and I believe they're the uh, they are uh, inverted. So 
They are two different ones. But they are relatively the same, just mirrored. Getting into the figure herself. We got double jointed pinless elbows, pin knees. She is going to be from the uh, the same legs and boots as Wave 1 Scarlet. But we got a new uh, top, new arms, I believe. And then, uh, obviously, a new head sculpt. So there it is. She's got a streak of dark hair right there over her eyes. There's that data pad. It's sculpted on, so it's not like an extra piece. We got our armored corset, for lack of a better term. There's the band-aid. Again, if you know what the band-aid is, let me know in the comments below, because I couldn't figure it out. And I was trying to do a little bit of Googling and reading different file cards and different reviews on different sites of the original figure back in 2009. And uh, I wasn't, wasn't having much luck. Is it a tattoo? Is it an actual band-aid? No idea. We got this new belt piece um, we haven't seen before. She's kind of—it's very similar to the uh, the Rise of Cobra figure with like the giant hard drives that, that one had. Then we got a loop on the back. I'm guessing for this goofy giant knife thing. But then again, you got a open blade just kind of hanging out, like we saw with a uh, nunchuck. So you could pin that in there if I can get it out now. There we go. And then we got two drop leg holsters for the automatic pistols. We'll throw those pistols in. That looks pretty solid. <laughs> Those extended mag stick way out. She's not going to be sitting down comfortably. Let's uh, clip these to the arm and go from there. Those just go right over the uh, arms fairly easy. Nothing nothing to, to worry about there. I guess you can kind of set it up however you want to have her, have her doing a thing. Give her these. Give her the swords. Go all out with the blades. But there you have it. One uh, negative is this yellow paint looks kind of goofy when it mixes with the with the gray in some places. Um, kind of seeing that cuff there. It's like not maybe another layer. I don't of the gray or the yellow. I'm not sure, but not too bad. We'll grab some other figures to do some comparisons here. We got Night Four Shooter. If I can get her to stand. We got Zarana. My board's acting up here. So, same height as uh, the standard female height, I guess. We can grab female steel core and our ninja viper or blue ninja, whichever you prefer to call her. And then we got Grunt, who I think is a pretty good standard for male figures. So, there you have it. There's Agent Helix. Um, you guys picking up, picking her up? You guys skipping out on her because you have no, oh, I don't know her, I'm not picking her up. Or or what? I mean, she's a badass in the comics. She pairs up with uh, Bomb Strike and Don Marina for a very extended amount of time. And I could definitely go for a Bomb Strike, but if we get Bomb Strike, I'd want Barrel Roll and Blackout complete the whole uh, family trio there but let me know in the comments below you guys picking her up skipping out on her until next time load up grab your kits i'll see you on the battlegrounds